He's looking for another paradigm shift. He hits it. 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 The paradigm shift. That's got to be it. Stay down, Trent. Stay down. Live to fight the oh. oh. So, let's try and rewind. What a year. Um, so, let's try and have a look at it retrospectively. The 80th anniversary happened, uh, Cardona, the rejoining of, you know, some old flames, me, Amari, Dan Maloney. Incredibly motivational stuff. And I think that was, I think that was what, I suppose, realistically I was searching for. So I don't think it could have been any more perfect, you know, Cardona. So, you know, full props to him. He's, he, at that point there, he was arguably maybe the most, most famous wrestler you could possibly wrestle on the independent circuit at the time. And the fitting and the setting and everything was right. It was me, it was Wolverhampton, it was the hangar, and it was perfect. There was a buzz. I think we rode the buzz as well, really nice. Um, the OTT weekend was incredible. It was just incredible to be on the road. You know, three in three days, I hadn't done that in a long, long time. And, um, you know, my hips felt it. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, it was good to be part of a team. It was good to be part of a locker room. It was good to be part of, everyone was in the same camp. Do you know what I mean? Everyone was moving forward. Everyone was trying to, you know, have the best match of the night or do the best thing they possibly could, you know, in that in that situation on that night, in that time. And I think that's what it's all about, isn't it? I, that is, for me, that is what wrestling is. It's about everyone coming together. You know, I think we touched on it on Out of Darkness, because, you know, how, how important it was that everyone came back together and we gelled again. You know, we all have the same goal, and that goal is to create that perfect, Escapism, that perfect, that perfect form of entertainment that we all grew up on and we all loved, and and that's what it felt like. That's what it really, really felt like that weekend. It felt like 
there was 20, 30, maybe 40 people, and then the crew as well, maybe 50, 60 people, all in it together. Like, all there to just blow the roof off every venue that we went to and leave the fans with, you know, the best weekend of their lives. And it was definitely the best weekend of my life anyway. One of the, one of the most, one of the, one of the most fantastic things about the Cardona match and the return to the Indies was the sheer luck and timing of having Tyler there. You know, that was massive, that was. Um, <clears throat> being able to do it in front of him and kind of with him, you know, just having him there, just out the back and just, you know, just being that little bit of support and, you know, it, it's just so wild how the paths continually intertwine and cross each other. It, it, it's frightening at some points when you actually realise just how how intricately things work and, you know, it's that chaos theory, I suppose, isn't it? It's like, it, it all just comes full circle. Everything comes back to, you know, that, that initial point. But yeah, having Tyler there was amazing. Obviously, I had a lot of friends and family there as well. That helped a lot. Um, but in, in reality, you know, I've said this a lot of times, I didn't feel nervous when I actually walked out. You know, when I heard my music and I walked out up the steps and I walked out to that, you know, to that raucous crowd. There was never, there was never a, a second where I didn't feel like this was exactly what needed to happen. It's exactly what I needed to do. It was exactly how I planned it. And yeah, it was, it was perfect. In almost three years, and I've wrestled about a total of 30 matches in front of a total of 30 people. And to be honest, the worry and stress in my head before this show, thinking fucking no one was going to turn up. <laughs> and I walk out there and swear to God my balls fell out of myself. My ass was on the floor because the fucking wrestle house is back in business! Yeah, so off the back of that was a lot of a lot of positive news, a lot of positive feedback, which is obviously, you know, exactly what we want. Um, and then, yeah, I think, maybe I think that then we moved on to a uh, debut for AEW in Texas. Introducing the challenger, Trent Seven. Wow, Trent Seven. Kip Sabian's hand-picked mystery partner, Trent Seven, a hard-hitting British heavyweight, now making his AEW debut here tonight to challenge freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy for the AEW All-Atlantic Championship. This is huge. Great experience. Um, I mean, back then, I mean, the, the company has come so far, and there's been so many... I mean, incredible moments that they've produced and incredible people who have joined and left, uh, you know, the team over there at AEW. For, you know, for the books and Kenny and uh, and Tony to have, have, have built, it's in such a short space of time, it's quite profound. Like, it really is. It, it, it It's something else. And it's those little things that you notice, obviously, after being, you know, with WWE and stuff and being with the bigger companies. It's very lucky to have been there because you see those little things now, like how big the the like the, the medical team is, and the, the medical team there is pretty incredible to be honest. I mean, there's it's quite a lot of blood, so they probably they've probably got their hands full anyway. Um, but there's just little things that I noticed about the medical team there, and you know, hats off to them as well. Like, I think the be the best thing for me that I take away from from my experience with AEW was. When I walked into that locker room or, or, you know, or into the lobby of the hotel that morning or I was wandering around backstage that day, the, the best thing about it and the thing that brought me the most joy, like, the, like sheer joy, was how many people had either slept on my sofa or I'd put, shit, put part bits in for a flight when, you know, when they were coming over to the UK or looked after them or gone out or, or been in another country or, or been on a tour of America or Australia or whatever with them. 
to now see them people with titles over their shoulders, like wrestling on national television every week, that I think that I think that was the best thing that, that AEW has done. I think not only is it giving the fans an alternative, uh, you know, viewing stream, it's given those people an opportunity to be able to tell their story and tell their path and tell their history of them in wrestling to the whole world. A couple of people, to name a few, Eddie Kingston, Orange Cassidy, just those two, for instance. Just seeing them at the absolute peak, at the absolute top of the game, the top of the industry, it was mind blowing, but it was also so, you know, so heartwarming as well. Oh, by the way, the, the tapping you can hear is the dogs just running around, just wondering what on earth is going on in the front room. It goes without saying that all of this, this last year and uh, all of the, the goals and all the dreams and all the hopes and everything, I, I, it takes it takes a lot of working parts. And, you know, the last year would definitely not have been the same if there wasn't the support and the backing of OTT, RevPro. The, the opportunities that have been given to me by OTT, um, obviously I've I took that NLW title and I've defended it all over the world. Um, ulti obviously, you know, ultimately lost it now, but you know, the, the point is like, I, I feel like I had to make that title worth something again, and I feel like it. I feel like I did that. So I'm, you know, I, I thank them for, for giving me that opportunity as well to do that. And then, you know, same with Rev Pro. Um, you know, we went deep with the the Michael Oku. Um, approach and, and I still truly believe that I am the real RevPro heavyweight, British heavyweight champion. You know, I think about the opportunities that have come from that, um, the copper box alone, what an incredible moment that was, you know, for the for is it 10th anniversary and also obviously the New Japan show as well, you know, debuting under that kind of like the, the a real New Japan banner, do you know what I mean? I had uh, the fortune of working with RevPro on a Global Wars before and we wrestled Naito and, uh, and Nagata, I think I wrestled on night two and they're experiences that you can't, you know, you can't you can't put any kind of value on. But this one, this one was really special, you know, Desperado is incredible, uh, an incredible talent. But like, I, I could feel it there as well, I could feel it backstage, I could feel, I could feel something a bit different there with New Japan. You know, especially now, especially with Gado and like the amount of work that he seems to be put into the, the younger talent, you know, like, you know, I look at Dan Maloney and I look at, you know, the War Dogs and these guys and, you know, Gabe. They're, they're performing at such an incredible, incredible level. That they have enough experience, obviously, within wrestling that it, I'll never take that away from them, but sometimes you have to realize just how young these guys are and the, the sheer, the unadulterated confidence in which they perform at is it's mind blowing sometimes man but the future is incredibly bright I think for New Japan and you know there's a lot that has to be said for those two British boys they've, uh, they've really turned it up and up to have Right, um, what else? Do you know what, how lucky am I really to be able to say that? You know, God, what else? It's been such an incredible year. So many flights, so many new cities, so many new towns. Barcelona, the, the crew at LLP, oh, incredible. Dubai, with the WrestleFest crew. So many incredible places, Body Zoe. Them boys over in Belgium and France are incredible. And also obviously CMLL, you know, which kind of just kind of came out of nowhere. Um, but yeah, so now I'm 2-0 oh in CMLL. So, you know, basically just the greatest luchador on earth. But uh, <laughs> PTW in Poland is an incredible setup. The guy who looks after that company is 
fantastic guy, man, real entertainer. Destiny in Canada has been a massive part of the year. Very, very lucky to have been doing the traveling and, and meeting the people that I have, but one of the most important people that I have to give a lot of credit to, uh, especially over the course of the last year, Anthony Corelli, Santino Morella. The friendship that I've been able to, to chalk up with him over the course of the last year. I mean, we knew each other before, but the last year has just been so fantastic to get to know him properly and his family and his kids and like, you know, the, the, that whole side, that whole side of him. He's just a really, really wonderful, wonderful man. And a, and, and a wonderful wrestler and a wonderful brain, but more so just a, a, a really wonderful man. Um, and yeah, he has done an incredible amount for me and, you know, goes without saying, same with the team at Destiny. You know, they've looked after me so well. And hopefully I've given them, I will continue to give it them back in the form of, you know, world-class professional wrestling uh, and defending their title all over the world. They put a lot on my shoulders and that was the whole point of this year, wasn't it? It was to take on however much I possibly could, take everything on my shoulders and go, right, I can run with this now. Let me prove to the world that I am a world champion, I'm an international champion, I can do it anywhere, I can do it against anyone. Trend 7 is your main event. You know, and I, and I needed to prove to myself that I could do it. And I, I honestly don't feel like it took long to do it. And it, it, a lot of it goes with, the, like I say, the support of the promoters and the, and the companies and, and the incredible talent that you're working with these days. It's, the talent pool is deep. It really is. And, and now I can go back into the locker room and, and I can be hopefully that little bit of a, little bit of a guiding light as to, as to like, you know, a bit of direction for the, you know, the likes of Leon and, and Luke Jacobs and all this, you know, the, the, the talent pool is incredible, but I feel like we're at the, the precipice of, of a real explosion of British talent all, all over the world. And personally, I don't think there's anywhere I'd, ra I'd rather be than right in that, in the epicenter of that is right there helping as much as I can, guiding as much as I can, and riding the coattails, to be honest, <laughs> you know, some of the talent that's out there. One of the best things to come from this year, for me personally, the ability to go back into the training ring and back into that, into that training kind of zone with seminars and, and teaching and training and still, don't get me wrong, <laughs> every single seminar or training session I've ever done, I've always learned something and written it down in my little pocket and I've probably gone to the next seminar and told everyone it was me because that's wrestling, right? Um, I got so much out of it, so much and like, and that, that's definitely something that's, that, that I'm, I'm definitely not gonna slow down on is the seminars, is trying to just pass on those little gems or that little bit that I had because the one bonus that I've got is that I, if I have anyone, prove that you can do it, prove that it is doable with whatever resources you've got. <laughs> um, I think I proved it, I, I really do, I think I proved it. And now with what, with, with changing, the attitude and the aspect of the way WWE and the way we were taught things ready for television and big pay-per-views and takeovers, etc. I feel like I've managed to be able to merge or at least integrate the indies as we see it now with two, three, four hundred people at a show and that and try and kind of like put it into a mixing bowl and bring out the almost like the perfect little cupcake of wrestling take the two viewpoints, the two complete polar opposites of the industry and be able to slightly just, just kind of push them together a little bit, like I said, and merge them. There isn't, there isn't one way of doing this. There's so, it, there is just no, it, there's no way there is. Because we all are different shapes, we are all different sizes, we all have different hair, we all have different abilities, agilities. There, there is room for people who have passion for this industry in the industry. It might not be in the ring, it might not be in a ref shirt, it might be behind the camera, right? 
it might be in front of it, it might be as a promoter, or as it, or as it might be, you know, someone who is a talent liaison. There's just so, there's so much depth to this industry, and you can make your mark. You can still make your mark in it. You don't have to do, you know, you have to be in the main event to make your mark on professional wrestling. Seeing wrestling from so many angles has ultimately given me the best perspective I could last for on it. I mean, arguably, I feel surely it's my responsibility to do that. It's trying to just, just mould, just help mould, not force people into a press, you know, just help mould, just direction, just give, just give people that little bit of a, a push or a pull or a, or a spin that they need just to, just to get the most out of what they've got. Do you know what I mean? You might not be the most athletic, you might not be the best talker, you might not be, there's certain aspects to, to every, every wrestler that isn't perfect. And it's getting the best out of those things that you that you're not perfect at, and maximising those positives, and maximising those those strengths that you do have. That that you know is the thing that is able to push people and push wrestlers onto incredible things. This year's been fantastic because I've been able to concentrate so much on that and so much on passing whatever bit of knowledge, and still continuing to absorb it as well to try and get the best out of everything. That's it, man. It's, a, it's an ever-evolving kind of of world professional wrestling, but the baseline stays exactly the same, man. We just we just gotta make people happy or make people sad on purpose <laughs> and entertain them. As a year in review. Um, it's always, I mean, it's always the same anyway. It's peaks and troughs. And there's incredible highs and there's incredible lows. From the high of Cardona and debuting two weeks of main event television for AEW to then straight after that second week sitting in my hotel room, crying my eyes out because no contract got offered. Yeah, um, you know, you, you you just can't. You'll never ever work this business out. You'll never ever work this industry out. You, you won't. And it just yo-yos, and it goes up and down, up and down all year. And you know, I put so much, I put so much emphasis on getting that contract. I think I searched too hard for that, you know, and that's what hurt me the most, and that's what broke my heart with the whole AEW thing. But then I look at it and I'm like, I'm like, you tell people the same thing every time, you, every time I do a seminar. If you got into this business, if you got into wrestling to make money, then you fucked it already. <laughs> You're in probably the wrong business because the percentage of people who, you know, let's take this Saturday coming. In the UK alone, how many wrestlers are gonna be on a show with someone paying, more than one person paying? God knows. To be a WWE champion or to be a WWE wrestler or an AEW wrestler on a six figure contract, the percentage <laughs> of people who are on that from the amount of people who are gonna go and wrestle this Saturday night is 0.0000001%. And that's when I look back at my career so far and I I feel so truly blessed to have reached the heights that I reached and got where I got and won multiple championships and, and being able to sit here and tell you that whole story. Because I know that I am I know that I was in the right place at the right time with the right people doing the right thing. And that's, there's so many things that have to work at the same time to get, to get what people perceive is the, is the, is the result out of wrestling. And that, that's not it. The, what is it is, if you, if you just love it, if, you, if you're doing something that you truly, truly love with all of your heart, then you'll always be okay. Like you'll always get whatever you'll get what you'll get what you deserve out of it. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Is 
is that's it. And what I had to do, and what I think I did do this year, is I just, I just fell in love with wrestling again. I fell in love with performing. I fell in love with being Trent Seven, and I just fell in love with wrestling. It's given me a lot of freedom, you know, obviously traveling, that's come back into, you know, that was something that I missed so dearly um, uh, during obviously the pandemic phase. And I look back now and I, I think I may have even taken it for granted. And I think the reason why I, f I feel like that is because now that the traveling has come back, it's, it's opened up me, you know, you're allowed to see the world again, you're allowed to go on planes again, you're allowed to go anywhere you want, Canada, etc., etc. What's more evident now, unfortunately, is just how much I miss the boys. Because <laughs> now I have to go and do all the travelling on my own, which is a little bit sad. But the flip side of that is, you know, being in freelance and being independent, I get to, you know, I can go away a few more times, you know, with the missus. I can, you know, we can take the dogs away or whatever, or, you know, just, just that little bit more freedom to do what I want. You know, I get a little bit more time to play golf as well, which is... As some of you may know, a slight passion of mine. I'm very good. It's allowed me to kind of be able to just step back from it and like, and look at it and, and kind of enjoy the moments a little bit more and enjoy life a little bit more and, and just be quite thankful for, you know, what I've managed to build and what I've, uh, what I've, what, what I've got right now, rather than the constant chase of, of you know, finance or, or fame or whatever it is, you know, sometimes you need that little bit of grounding. The story alone <laughs> of, of how the Moxley match even, even came around is so bizarre. So Joe and OTT had Moxley scheduled to appear pre-COVID, pre-pandemic era. That then got cancelled. Then the booking was on hold for what, three years? <laughs> the booking was then on hold for three years. So then it's trying to put that kind of now round peg in the square hole type thing. And then we did the second match from OTT at the Hangar, I think. And it was just after that, right? I think it was just after the multi-man, I think it was an eight-man tag, I think. And just after that, that was when it was announced here in Wolverhampton, John Moxley versus Trent Seven in my hometown. And I was like, Phew. does it get any bigger than this? Does it get any bigger than this moment? Close, but no cigar, right? I can remember. It was something to do with AEW doing house shows, or something like that, and it was a house show in his hometown, so he gets pulled from the initial one. Fair enough, this is massive, massive industry, and AEW are way more important than OTT, unfortunately, and I'm way less important than AEW having their number one guy on the show at that time wrestling in his hometown. Will it happen? It will. He's been booked for three years. It's it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. And then, fucking hell, come on, man. As if it happens a year to the day. A year to the day. <laughs> From eighth anniversary, one year, one calendar year, we go back to the hangar and we've gone from Cardona to John Moxley in exactly a year. I oh, know, man. If the world can tell you anything, if that story, that process, that timeline can tell you anything, it's that anything can happen. We are just such tiny little moving parts in this incredible like, experience of life that when things come across, you just got to be there and you got to be ready and you got to be in the right place, in the right space, at the right time, ready to go. Do you know what I mean? It's just wild, man. There's just, you know, there's so many 
stories and, and, and lessons to be learned from that. But the one is, man, you just gotta keep your chin up and you just gotta keep going. And you just gotta keep grafting and just keep believing in it. Like we were saying, man, if you just keep going and you just keep giving it everything you got, it will give it you back, man. It really will. So do you think you've given it everything or have you still got some left in the tank? Hmm. 